Okay, so this splint is used for when you have a patient that can't supinate or pronate the forearm. I think it's best to use this when you have someone that has like oh, not a super, super hard end feel. I would probably go to the Jazz if it was very, you know, an old, you know, remote, like they hadn't moved for months and now you're trying to get them to move. This is more for someone that maybe had a wrist fracture that was recently plated and they can't supinate well. So they're missing that last, you know, 30 degrees. And you could get them in therapy, but they can't maintain it. So you make two parts. You make an elbow part, um, and you can see it's just a basically lay, I lay them supine, and I mold it like I would any of my elbows. I just have to make it short so when it goes on their forearm, it doesn't articulate with the hand part. So here's the two parts. This is just a like wrist cock up, but I do the one with the hole cut out because it gives them a little more support when it rotates the forearm. Um, as you can see, I also kind of like overlay it. You look at this angle, so it curves in. So it kind of goes right up to the ulna. Sometimes I even go over the ulna. Where a typical um, you know, cock up, I would go, I would cut lower so it wouldn't impede with the ulna. This they're just going to wear for 15, 20 minutes max. So I don't really care about the comfort. It's not going to be comfortable to begin with. It's more about stabilizing the wrist. So when it rotates, the splint doesn't come off the wrist. Okay? So now I'm going to... Uh, show you how to put on the device uh, to allow it to rotate. So this, these components is what's going to hold the rubber tube that's going to help supinate the arm. So you got to get these on the splint. So if you want it for supination, you got to put it on the owner side of the hand piece. So what I do is I take the piece, put it where I want it, take the heat gun, just heat up the area, take my little Allen key and I make a spot. And then I take the hole puncher and I punch the hole. And then I screw the screw through like that. So it's pretty easy. Okay? Clip it, place it, screw it in. Okay, you're going to mount the brackets on. So it's on the owner side of the wrist for supination and on the lateral side of the forearm, I mean the upper the humerus, uh, for supination. The opposite would be true for pronation. So when you get the rubber tube, you obviously control. You undo the, you know, you loosen the little fittings, you slide the tube in, and then tighten it up tight because there's going to be a lot of pressure on this tube. Go to each hole. The hardest part is getting the bracket on, especially if you don't have a hole puncher, which I don't. It doesn't mean you can't make the splint if you don't have a hole punch. So when you get it on, this is how it looks. You get it on the owner side of the of the forearm, forearm low here. Okay, elbow, lateral epi area. Then you, if you want to pronate, if you want to supinate, you're going to take the splint and you're going to twist the the rubber thing into pronation the opposite way. Obviously, the more you twist it, the more tension the splint's going to provide. You're going to put the hand base on, strap her in, strap her in, and then slowly let go, and it's going to supinate the, the arm through the tension of the band, uncoiling. So obviously, it's not made for someone that is, it's, it's like a soft tissue end feel, like a wrist fracture that can't rotate. They wear it for 15, 20 minutes, three times a day, that's usually in their routine. And they can increase the, the stretch by twisting more beforehand. So I usually have them count the twists before they uh, before they uh, put it on, so they know how many how many twists they're giving this for. Okay, so for that, if you want if you want to supinate, you're going to twist it into pronation. Okay, if you're going to pronate, you're going to twist it into uh, supination. Okay, that's it, you guys. Thank you.